Do you need to be a marine biologist to work with the ocean and help preserve our oceans? I'm about to answer that question. Hi everyone, my name is Maria and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maria and I'm a marine biologist and I'm about to finish my PhD in a field of marine biology. Over the past year since I started doing this on YouTube, I've gotten comments and messages of people telling me that they would like to shift their careers to working with something more related to ocean conservation. But they think that, first of all, their field is completely unrelated to ocean conservation and environmental protection, and also that they are too old. I've gotten it, someone who's 23 telling me they're too old. Yeah. Let's get serious. This video today is not about whether you're too old to become a marine biologist. Obviously, the short answer to that question is the younger you are, the easier it is. 23 is young, by the way. Don't stress yourself if you're 23 and you still want to choose, change careers, you can do that, no problem. The older you get, the more difficult it is because you're competing with people that started this path earlier. But I mean, if you do it right, if you meet the right people, it is still possible. But that's not what I am going to talk to you about today. The question I want to answer today is, do you need to be a marine biologist to work in ocean conservation? The short answer is no. Here comes the long answer. Marine scientists, mer like marine biologists, marine chemists, marine ecologists, all marine scientists, work to understand how marine environments work. Once we've got our results and we've reached our answers to the questions that we posed regarding the marine environment, we write up our results and our observations, kind of develop some reasons for why we have observed what we did, and we release our information and our studies into the world. Of course, this is very important, not only from a knowledge standpoint to just better understand how the world works, but from a practical standpoint as well, as well to make regulations for fisheries, for sustainable use of marine resources, for marine conservation. You need to know as much as you can about how the environments work. So yes, marine biologists are very important because we do need this knowledge to be able to make decisions. However, while these this information is used, or at least should be used, to make decisions, marine biologists are not necessarily involved in making them. Non-governmental and governmental organizations, institutions, universities, local and national, regional and international governments, you have international units, all these players are very important in ocean conservation and they are not mostly composed of marine biologists. I've made a list of job openings that I found across different uh, environmental organizations. Not all of them are related to the ocean, but they, environmental organizations always have obviously the ocean encompassed in the things that they work with because the ocean is part of the environment. I did find a lot of jobs that were not marine biology or the job openings for positions that were not marine biology and I made a list of the ones I found now and the ones and some that I already found previously that I remember seeing and I'm just gonna read them to you so that you have an idea of other types of jobs that these organizations that work with protecting the environment look for. Head of marketing, sales talent, I'm not really sure what it is, I guess it's someone who's really good at selling stuff. Fundraiser person, so someone who's really good at fundraising. This is very important for any organization, especially NGOs. Events organizer, photographer, social media manager, cinematographer, data scientist, science communicator, web designer, administration personnel. And these are just some. There's for sure more that I don't have on this list. This is just to give you an idea that you don't need to be a marine biologist to work in an environmental organization or to help the ocean. Of course, if you have some experience with the marine environment or some exper or some knowledge about science or environmental issues, it will probably be a benefit even if you apply to these positions because it shows that you already know a little bit about the environment you're getting into. But this, you can do it in your free time. You can volunteer, you can learn a lot and just show that you 
know a lot in your motivation letter, for instance. I do have to say that a lot of these positions are not permanent positions. Sometimes these organizations and institutions, they have projects for a limited period of time and they only search for these people during this period of time. So yeah, these positions are not necessarily always permanent but neither are the positions for marine biologists, so that doesn't change much. Of course, these NGOs and these organizations and institutions and entities, all these things that I talked to you about, many of them do have marine biologists in them, but they're just not solely composed of marine biologists or biologists or people who studied ecology or biology. There's just so many other positions that are very important to make these organizations and these entities work. And all of this is not even talking about the political part of all of this, whether we like it or not, and whether we like politics or not. The main decisions and actions on ocean conservation have to pass through some kind of political entity. And this, again, it can be local governments, regional governments, national governments, international units, depends, depends on what it is that you want to do and what decision has to be taken. So ideally you need people who are working in these entities that have some kind of knowledge in marine affairs. For instance, lawyers, economists, politicians, there are degrees, there are courses in marine policy, in marine econ economy, in marine law. Sometimes there's just a specialization. So if you have a degree in law, you can specialize in maritime law. If you have a degree in economy, you can specialize in marine economy, for instance. So if you have any of those degrees and you want to work more in things related to the ocean, these are all options that exist out there. There are also marine biologists that build a reputation for themselves throughout their career and make the right connections and make the right decisions and they manage to get a foot in politics and help in the decision-making process and legislation making, for example. But these are not many and uh, many don't even like that. And it's also not the job of a marine biologist. These ocean and maritime related, more bureaucratic positions are very important in, in ocean conservation and environmental conservation in general. Maybe some people would even prefer this type of job, a more bureaucratic job, a more decision-making and political type of job rather than the more technical part of marine biology. So this is, if this is something that you think is for you, these are very important jobs and there's not many people going for them. And one of the reasons I think is because the people who want to help in ocean conservation end up going to fields like marine biology because they feel when they start studying that this is the only option. But it's not. And if given cir your life circumstances, you cannot afford to just risk everything, right? To quit your job, whatever it might be, and to just go and maybe find a job in an NGO or a, a marine organization or whatever. If you don't have that option, there are still other op ways in which you can help the ocean. Of course, your individual actions, you know, just taking care of the things you do and be more environmentally aware, but you can participate in activities in your local community, for instance. If you live near the ocean, you can start your own movement of, for instance, beach cleanups. You can do it yourself with some friends. At some, you can invite more people to do it. You can contact your lo the local governments, try to maybe participate or even propose some projects together. There's a lot of things that you can do as well uh, in kind of your volunteer base, part-time hobby. <laughs> you can create a blog. You can try to spread the word. Scientifically accurate, please. Please don't spread scientifically inaccurate information. That can really hinder the efforts in conservation. So if you are spreading information and you start a blog, for example, like I just said, make sure that you have your sources right and that the information you are spreading is the correct one. This was it, everyone. If you have further questions on this, please leave them down below. I usually try to answer in the first day I'm answering all comments. If I miss any, I'm sorry. If you wanna follow me on my Instagram, please do so. Here it is. 
I think this video can be useful for someone. Share it if you want to watch more marine biology slash ocean related content. Don't forget to subscribe down here. And yeah, like the video if you liked it. And thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.